Welcome to the Unreal Engine for You tutorials. In this tutorial, we are going to do AI jumping. As you can see in this project, I have a third person character, which is the mannequin, and I also have a second character, which is controlled by AI. Also, this guy is able to perform jumping while he's always following me, as you can see. So this guy is able to jump over and over again every time he finds an obstacle. And also is able to calculate the paths using jumps. So to do this, we are going to, 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 to have, uh, as I have here, jumping AI tutorial. Um, <clears throat> sorry, a simple uh, third person project. And now what I'm going to do is to create the necessary things so we can have um, a, a character that is able to move around and then jumping. The first thing that I'm going to do is to go to the blueprints folder on my third person BP and I'm going to create a copy of this third person character, which will be our AI character. So the first thing is to create a folder. I will name this folder AI, AI for artificial intelligence. And then here I will put all the required things. The first thing that we'll require is to make a copy of our AI. I will select copy and then in the AI folder, I will rename our the copy of our third person character as AI Mannequin. Now, if we double click on our AI Mannequin and we open it, we have here the code um, needed um, to currently copy of our third person character. Since this is uh, for an AI character. We don't need any of this, so we can just select ev everything and press delete. Now, we can go to the viewport and as you can see, we also have a camera and a camera boom. We don't need those also, so let's delete them. So basically, now we have this character set up to be controlled by AI since we have deleted all the unnecessary things. So moving on now I'm going to create a artificial intelligence and a blackboard since we are going to create to use a blackboard and a behavior tree to um, control our character and I'm going to call this blackboard our mannequin blackboard mannequin bb and <clears throat> inside our mannequin bb we'll 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 need only one key which will be our player character and our player character will be of the type character okay that's it so our um, blackboard is all set up. Now we need to use a behavior tree. Let us create a new behavior tree. There it is. I will call it mannequin. Sorry, mannequin need to end. Mannequin behavior tree BD. And now our mannequin BT or BD will have a sequence. And now the sequence will have only two tasks. The first will be a move to, so the character will move to our player character. This is already set up. And then after moving successfully to our player character, it will wait for a given time. Let us say that we'll wait for three seconds. Now, we already have this. We will need to do one thing more, which is to create an AI controller. So I'm going to create a new blueprint class 
and I will say that I want to create an AI mannequin controller and this will be oh sorry which you, I want an AI controller yeah that's it an AI controller and now the, na the, the, the name of our class will be AI mannequin controller that's it and here we'll set up all the necessary things to control our mannequin by using our blackboard setting up the variables on the blackboard uh, using our behavior tree and that's it so now that we have our mannequin controller we can set up on a our mannequin we can go to the pawn properties on the class settings or class defaults we are going to pawn properties there it is and now on pawn properties we are going to say that our ai controller for this class is our ai mannequin controller this way now click compile and save now this way every time we place an ai mannequin if we go here on the properties and looking at the pawn uh, properties our ai that is controlled this this pawn is um our ai mannequin controller which is this class so what we do here on this class will be automatically controlling our third person character so right now i'm going to do one more thing which is go to volumes and then to create uh, I'm going to type nav and now we have our nav mesh bonds volume place it over here and if I press P you can see with green color our current nav mesh and now with this selected I'm going to the brush settings so I can expand our the bonding box of our nav mesh volume and so this crosses all the things and right now we have the nav mesh setup we just need to make our character to find and go to look for our character and we'll always chase him we already have this set on the behavior tree we just need on our ai controller to initialize the blackboard values with the character with the, 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 the our player controller our player character and then uh, make the running the, the the behavior tree so this is really simple to do and it's just like this so in our begin play of our character controller I'm going to um, set to use blackboard and that's it I'm going to tell to our play controller to use this blackboard and the blackboard you are going to use is this one the mannequin blackboard and then with this blackboard I can say set value as object and we can go to the blackboard select copy the entry name the, the value the entry key is player character I press ctrl C to copy and now for the key name I just need to promote this to a variable I will call this variable player character key compile so I can give this thing a default value and I'm going to place here the name of the of the key which is the name that I copied from here now that I already have this I just need to 
tell to run a behavior tree and the behavior tree that I want to run is the mannequin behavior tree. Now the AI is not able to jump yet but we can test this and you can see that something is missing let me see what is happening uh, begin play use blackboard oh I forgot to set the I need to when the, the game begins I need to say get player character and set this value store this value on the blackboard now the, the character of the player is stored so when you run the behavior tree the bot follows this guy now it's done notice that and when the character chases me he stops for a, a, a little while and then goes back to me and stops and we can test this like so as well I can show the behavior tree like this run the game put this a little small so as you can see the character is waiting now he's moving to towards me now he's waiting three seconds now he's moving towards me so as you can see the the behavior tree is running but the character is not able to jump so he has to go around to 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 chase me and if i'm going to down he doesn't know how to jump and then he has to move around as well so how to perform the jump to perform the jump this is really really easy to do when we create our nav mesh bounce volume on the map is created automatically a second actor which is the recast nav mesh default and this object has all the properties of the nav mesh navigation and here you can set set the agent radius the agent height the agent max height the max slope the um, the cell size and so on and so on and here is a very um, important thing which is the max step high this by by setting this property this makes the, the character um, interpret these stairs as a single ramp so basically we just have to set this up and imagine that the character is able to jump let's say two meters high so if i set this to two meters high so 200 now the uh, the nav mesh is calculated thinking that the character can go through here from here as performing a, a single step so since our character is able to jump two meters high and by setting this now the nav mesh is able to calculate that the character is able to move let me hide the the mesh is able to move from this spot to this spot and from this spot to this spot but right now is not able to jump but is able to fall from up to the ground now this way he is able to jump to the ground but if he tries to move to me like so he will be stuck on the wall so we just have to perform some sort of line tracing or wall detection and when we detect a wall we trigger and jump and that's it the, the AI is able to jump towards me so let's do it um, let me go to the mannequin controller AI I'm doing this all on the controller because the controller is the thing that controls the character and it's like a player that is controlling the character but in, in this case it's an AI controller an AI player so if I want to trigger a jump by controlling the player I should do this uh, on the AI controller so I'm just going to create um, our pawn 
uh, uh, create a new a new variable and I will call it store pawn to store our um, character the the pawn that our AI is controlling and I'm going to say that this is of the type character object references and now on the on process event I'm going to store my pawn I will not be able to do this because I have to perform a cast so I'm going to cast as character I'm going to to convert this to a pure cast and that's it now I have my store pawn now in heaven tick what I have to do is really really simple is grab my stored pawn check if he is moving and to check if he is moving I can uh, get his velocity and compute the length of the velocity and now I can compare if the length is greater than let's say 100 so this will tell me if, if the character is moving at a certain speed now I place a branch over here and if the character is moving at uh, uh, some high at the relative high speed I will perform a sphere trace a sphere trace by channel and the channel will be visibility to see if there is any wall in front of me and if there is any wall I just have to jump so I'm going to use my character the trace will start on my character so I need to get the actor location so this will be the starting point of my sphere trace and then for the um, the end point I just need to get the forward vector of my actor multiply it by let's say um, two meters and a half so 250 centimeters sum these for those guys who have OCD I just need to line all these things up and that's it and now I will put the debug for one frame and I will say that I have a radius of 20 and if the player collides with um, if the line trace or sphere trace detects a wall we just need to perform jump on our character and basically that's it as you can see you have the sphere trace working let us see if the character is able to jump and jump and that's it come here boy come here let's see if you can do this jump yeah this one also and that's it now with proper tweaking and tuning you can play all around with this and basically this way you have an AI that is able to jump thank you guys I hope you like my tutorials I hope you enjoy my videos see you soon bye